All right, so the cup race at Bristol. Man, there was a lot that happened in this race we need to talk about. It was a very, um, very chaotic and exciting race. It was actually what, probably one of the better races this season. Easily, I would say this is the best race this season by a country mile. Easily very good race. Wait, there was a lot of passing for the lead. A lot of hard racing. A lot of shit happened. A lot of comers and goers. Like, everything happened in this race. You know, there was a lot of cautions, of course, a lot of crashes. Um, there was Blaney who got taken out by, taken out, sorry, by Ty Dillon because Ty Dillon's a fucking retard that couldn't see the brightest car in the track and ran right into his front end. <laughs> like, seriously, how the fuck do you miss Blaney's car? Blaney literally has the brightest car on the track. You know, we also had the incident with, um, Ricky Stiles and Jimmy Johnson. Um, Jimmy did no fault because ahead of Jimmy, um, Kenseth got loose and Ricky had to check up, and Jimmy had no like no time to react, so Jimmy had no choice, really. So Stenhouse is gonna get wrecked regardless. And even if Jimmy did slam his brakes, um, Jimmy still would have ran into Stenhouse's rear end and turned him. You know, it ended up taking out a lot of good cars, like Reddit got took taken out in it, and also took out Bowman and Cole Custer, like a lot of good cars. And Stenhouse is having a really good run to Bristol, you know. Stenhouse will just end up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, very chaotic race. You know, there was also the incident where Harvick, I don't know what the hell happened with him when he went up the track and into Eric Jones. Not sure if Harvick had a tire go down or not, or if Harvick just got loose and ended up, and Eric Jones just ended up in the way. But yeah, that was weird. We also had Newman's two spin incidents. Like, there was a lot that happened. But let's get to the ending, shall we? So yeah, late in the race, um, Hamlin was leading in lab traffic. Hamlin ends up in the wall, sets the stage up where Wagano and then Chase Elliott go right on by. Then Chase Elliott goes in full sense in the corner to try and, you know, go for the lead and go past Logano. Tried to force Logano up the track and Hamlin up the track too. And then Hamlin ended up getting loose and then Hamlin got T-boned by a lab car. I believe the lab car was um, BJ McLeod in the 78. And then Logano then ran into Jason's rear end during the caution. Because I guess Logano took, took exception to that hard racing. Really, Logano? You never done that before? Hmm, where have we seen Logano race trip drivers hard like that before? I swore we saw that. Before. See, so yeah, it sets up like the last five laps for the restart. Um... Logano would fight to get past Chase Elliott, then in like three to go in turn one, Chase Elliott would try and do the bump and run on Logano. Both of them made some slight contact on the back straightaway. And then let's get to what happened in turn three and four. Uh man, there's a lot to talk about with this. So Chase Elliott gets loose underneath Logano, and then Chase and Logano both ended up going in the wall. Both of them ended up taking each other out of the race. That would allow Kislowski to sneak by and Kislowski would steal the win. Now this incident, who was at fault? Well, Logano was not at fault. I would also say... Uh, I don't know if Chase, we could say Chase Elliott is at fault. I think Chase Elliott could have played a little smarter there, but Chase Elliott, you know, he was trying to go for the win. He was trying to go for the win because Logano was pretty good on the short runs. So yeah, Chase Elliott knew that if he wanted to win the race, he had to make the move there. You know, I think for Chase, you know, he got loose and he just, and Wagano just ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think it was just, it was just typical short track hard racing. And, but, and, and both of them ended up on the short end of the stick. And then let's go to after the race where Wagano went and confronted, um, Chase Elliott. And Wagano said that Chase was being a, what Chase did was childish and that Chase wrecked him. He didn't wreck you. He was racing you hard, you dumbass. He was not right wrecking you. Like, you both were still able to continue and finish the race. Hell, I'm surprised they didn't throw the caution after. But, yeah. So. But, yeah, you know, Chase did take the fault for it. I'm not sure really if Vitor was that fault. You know, it was just hard racing, you know. Both of them ended up on the bad end of the deal. But it's like, Logano was complaining about getting hard raced. Motherfucker, you for real, Logano? You want to bitch about people racing you hard? Bitch, you remember Martinsville 2018 when you did the bump and run on Martin Truex Jr.? 
and then both of you being banged each other to the line, and you beat Logano, well, Martin Truex there. And last time I recalled in that incident, Logano, I actually defended you in that incident because I said it at first, because I say it here. I have no problem with the bump and run. As long as you don't wreck the sum, bitch, I got no problem with it. I think what happened during that incident, I think what I think Chase was trying to force some Logano up the track, and Logano was trying to pinch Chase down on the bottom, and then Chase ended up getting, just getting loose. He just got loose there, overdrove the corner a little bit, got loose, and Logano just ended up being in the wrong place at the wrong time, like I said. It's just hard racing. Both of them ended up on a bad deal. But it's like, really, Logano? You want to complain about that, and yet, how many times have you done this shit in the past? Face it, Logano. You got beaten the one thing you fucking done that, what, done for years. You've done this shit how many times in the past? But hold on, folks. It's only okay if Logano or Kyle Busch does it. But when Logano or Chase Elliott, or, I mean, Logano or Kyle Busch are on the other end of it, it's like, whoa, 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 back the fuck up. That's dirty racing. They should be fucking shot. They should be suspended. That is dirty. How about this, Logano fans? If you're going to offend what Logano did at Martinsville 2018, then, that, then what happened today should be no exception. You should hold everyone else to the same standard you hold Logano. Let's be real. Logano's a fucking thin-skinned, rich, little rich kid bitch. A fucking snowflake. Logano can dish the hard racing, but he can't take it. He can dish it out, but he can't take it. Honestly, at least Kyle Busch didn't win. Thank God. So Kyle Busch still remains winless. Also, Logano, you remember um, Auto Club 3rd 2013 when you forced Tony Stewart all the way down to the apron? You know, that hard race scene? And yeah, I would defend. I would say, you know, that was the right move, you know, because I got, because there's no rule against blocking. But what happened, Logano, was you got your ass kicked after that race. And there was also that thing in that same auto club race where you and Hamlin were being and banging each other in turn three and four. Kyle Bush passed the both of you. And then both of you ended up in the wall. And yet that was okay. And yet people want to give Chase Elliott shit for this incident. Not oh, because it's Chase Elliott. Hell, everyone's even trying to compare this to the Kyle Bush Chase Elliott incident at Darlington two and a half weeks ago. No, that incident is different from this incident. Darlington happened on a straightaway and Kyle Busch straight up drove in the chase. Went straight up the track to try and squeeze into a gap that wasn't there. Logano and Chase, Logano was just go. I mean, Chase was just going for the win. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. Could he have been smarter in that situation? Yeah. But, you know, he tried to, you know, he tried to race him hard. You know, hard racing. You know, anybody, you know, it's just hard racing. I don't fault Chase for trying to go for the win or trying to do that. You know, I don't fault Logano either. Both of them race hard, shot or hard. You know, anybody that can't handle that kind of racing are fucking pussies. Plain and simple. You don't like it, then don't watch it. Just hard racing. But yeah, and then, Ch and then Logano had the audacity to demand an apology for Chase. Apologize for what? Bro, going for the win? You know, Wagano and Wagano fans, you want an apology? Here's my apology right here. That's what I have to say about your apology. Take it and shove it up your ass. I'm not sorry for what Chase did. I mean, if I was in Chase's position, I would have done the exact same thing. I would have gone for the win too, you know? That was his chance to go for the win. He you know they both came out in the short end of the stick. I mean, it's another tough loss for Chase Elliott. It should have been another win for Chase, but this one, you know, it was just hard racing, you know. I think it was far, you know, just hard racing gone wrong. Like, I mean, we need that. We need, it's just short track racing. We need that, well, we need more of that kind of racing. Simple as that. But yeah, for Wagano, I'm um, complaining. Um, Here's this clip I have for Wagano about what he wants. Since you want to be a f***ing clown, I thought I should let you know the circus is nine miles in the opposite direction. So yeah, fuck Wagano, fuck Kyle Busch, you're both fucking clowns. The end. But yeah, anyway, let's see what happened with Kyle Busch last, the last couple of days. Oh dear. Oh dear.
Kyle Busch should not take Chase Sully getting a win before him very well. And Kyle, Kyle complained about what happened at Charlotte Thursday on Twitter. Let's review. When surrounded by squirrels, you are bound to get hit by a nut. What the hell is he talking about? So pumped about my mad driving skills, making it back to the pits on a flat left rear. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. Man, what the f is you what talking the f about? Was that? Nigga, I'm sorry, man. Man. Fucking clown. Man, kill this clown. Enough from the clown. You know, Kyle, as a wise man named Antonio Brown once said, keep your emotions off the internet. And Kyle Busch obviously never got this message. Hell, this isn't the first time Kyle Busch has gone on a social media temper tantrum. Because he's done this shit countless times. I mean, the last time we really had to talk about this incident was like 2018 after Auto Club. When Kyle Busch ran away from the media like a little bitch after finishing third. Because I guess third wasn't good enough to him. Hey, you know, third place isn't bad. You know, it's a solid points day. Take it, take, at least be professional about it. And then Kyle Busch would go on and, like, and, like, respond to, like, 50 hater comments on Twitter. And there was a certain line I said in that when I talked about that incident, I'm gonna say here, Kyle. Let me reiterate what I said two years ago. Kyle Busch, you know, Kyle, if you spent less time bitching and complaining and crying up a storm on social media, and more time, oh, I don't know, focusing on your race cars... Maybe you'd have a couple wins already. And you know what the result was of that of that incident two years ago when I said that to Kyle? Kyle ended up responding by winning three straight races. And knowing my luck, I probably jinxed it and Kyle's probably going to go on a four-race winning streak. Because that's how this is going to end. So yeah, sorry Kyle Bush haters, I fucking jinxed it. But yeah, Kyle... How about you spend less time bitching on social media and more time focusing on your race cars? Maybe then, Kyle, you could actually fucking do something this season. You absolute fucking clown. But, yeah. You know. Yeah, sorry about that. My dog was barking there and I was just trying, you know, to get her to quiet down. But, yeah, also, by the way, if you're noticing why the banners are floating like that in the background... Yeah, I actually got um, two fans going on right now since I installed some fans in my room. Since it's about to get hot, we're getting into the summer months, and yeah. Yeah, you know, I gotta stay cool and calm during these times. And also gotta make sure my hair stays good. But, yeah, you know. Anyway, Bristol, I'm easily the best race this year. That was actually a pretty good finish. Like, I'm not pissed, you know, even though Chase Elliott lost, I'm not even mad about this finish. It was actually a really good race. Um... 8 out of 10 race for me. Easily the best race this year. Like, it seems every time we go to Bristol, the track never disappoints. You know, too bad there were no fans in attendance to see this race in person. That's just the bad part. So, yeah, next cup race is Atlanta next Sunday. We also got um, Xfinity Monday. I'm not going to be able to watch it because I got work tomorrow. Thank God I'm working tomorrow so I don't have to watch. Because Kyle Busch is going to be on commentary for that race. Wonderful. So yeah, I'd rather go to work and make bank than have to listen to Kyle Busch's stupid voice for three fucking hours. Thank God. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. And also next week, IndyCar is back finally. At Texas. And this time it's for real. Thank God, Tex. Thank God IndyCar is back. Now we got some other forms of racing we can watch, too, during these tough times. Now, if Formula 1 can get off their ass and get back in action, then that would be really great. So, yeah. Hmm. You know, yeah. Also, I want to say one more thing about Kyle Busch today. Oh, yeah. Kyle Busch also... I'm not sure if anyone caught it, but earlier in the race, I think it was like when Hamlin got the lead, Kyle Busch tried to pull the team orders thing. When Kyle Busch um, demanded that Denny Hamlin let him by because Kyle was faster than Denny. So Kyle Busch tried to do the F1 team orders. And to no surprise, Denny Hamlin completely ignored the orders. Kyle Busch, you're in the wrong sport. This is not Formula 1. This is NASCAR. In NASCAR, there is no such thing as team orders. And oh, by the way, Kyle, one more thing. You're not Lewis Hamilton, by the way. 
You don't uh, you don't got that kind of power at Joe Gibbs Racing like Lewis Hamilton has at Mercedes. Better luck next time, Kyle. Maybe win a couple more championships and Joe Gibbs will grant you that kind of power. But, yeah, I just thought that was pretty interesting that Kyle Busch wanted to try that shit. I guess, hey, whatever works for him works for him. But, yeah. But, yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say for this. See you all in Atlanta next Sunday. That's a, hope everyone's a great day. Stay safe during these tough times right now. And, yeah, peace out.